If you're working on a game right now, chances are you're going to want some decent music for your game. But if I know the world of game dev, then you're probably going to run into some of the following problems. Ideally, you'd hire a musician or a composer to make the music for you, but doing that is going to cost you hundreds, if not thousands in cash. And I don't know about you, but I don't have loads of money sitting around to spend on some music for a game that... I might not even finish. So, if you can't get someone else to do it, that leaves you normally with about two options. Either find some generic, royalty-free music that someone else has made, or make it yourself. Now, because making your own music is often really hard, people usually opt for the royalty-free route. And while this can work as a placeholder, you'll often end up with something that's quite generic because it's being used by literally thousands of other people. So it certainly won't feel unique to your project, and there's a good chance it won't even fit the feel or style of your game. And I was thinking, if only there was a method to make music easily that's personal to your own projects. Which led me to the things I'm about to show you. Through my own learning, practice, trial and error, I found some incredibly easy techniques that will help you achieve some really, really good results with your music. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, this method isn't foolproof and doesn't displace the work of actual professionals. What this method will hopefully do is equip you with the skills that will allow you to make your own music that's personalised to your projects for free and without having too much knowledge about music theory. I think this is ideal for making songs or tracks for Game Jam games, or to hand off to someone else later in development to give them some indication or direction on how you want your game to sound. So subscribe if you like this video or end up finding it helpful, and let's just get right into it. First, you're going to need some production software to make your music. I use a program called LMMS because it's free and a lot of the alternatives are generally quite expensive. But if you do have one of the alternatives, you can always use that too, it doesn't really matter. Some other examples of the things I'm talking about include things like Ableton, Fruity Loops or GarageBand. You know, that type of thing, and not generally those web-based music makers, I don't particularly like those. Next, you're going to want to check that your production software has some good instruments or sounds to use. In LMMS, I generally just use the default ones that come for free with the software. So, drums or percussion are generally the backbone to any track you make. They drive the rhythm of the track and give a real bedrock to what the music is trying to do. But before I tell you how to make a drum loop, I need to give you a bit of background to music in general as well as the editor. Nearly all music can be divided into evenly spaced amounts of time called bars. For about 98% of all the music you've ever heard in your entire life, each of these bars will contain four beats. Now, this might sound strange to start with because of a lot of new terminology, but it's easiest to hear if you just listen to some music and then try and clap or click along in time with it, counting upwards to four as you do so. Look, I'll show you an example. And hopefully you get the idea. You can count in these groups or bars of four and you'll stay in rhythm or in time with the music. So for each of these bars or every four beats, we have a drum loop that plays to keep us in rhythm. Generally, it does this by playing on the beat, which will give us that strong reference point we want. Most softwares will show you where each beat is in a bar by alternating the colors slightly as you look along the editor. LMMS has a specific drum loop editor that you can open by clicking in the empty space in the song editor next to where it says beat slash baseline zero. So let's make our first drum loop. If I'm stuck for ideas, I generally always go to this first basic drum loop to start with. First, I look for a nice bass drum sound. I tend to like the shorter, snappier sounds rather than the long, booming bass drums, but it's all personal preference, so just pick something you like. All of the sounds that I use can be found by searching in these tabs that you can see at the far left-hand side of the LMMS UI. So you want to take your bass drum sound and drag it into the beat and bass line editor. 
then make it play at the start of the first beat and at the start of the third beat in the editor by clicking in these places. Next, we want to find a snare drum. This will do a similar thing to the bass drum, but sit on the start of the second and fourth beat instead of the first and third beat. This should give us an alternating, evenly spaced pattern that will play one of the drum sounds at the start of each beat in the bar. Then we need to find a hi-hat sound you like. I generally prefer the ones that are slightly softer and don't have as much of an abrasive, harsh tone to them, but just choose what you like. You're going to want to put the hi-hat on the start of every beat as well as every half beat. This will mean that you have eight hi-hats play, two bass drums and two snares play throughout your drum loop. It will end up looking something like this. And you can choose to vary this pattern up a bit once you get the hang of it to get some more varied results. But you probably won't want to stray too far from this initial pattern when you're getting started, at least until you get the hang of it and you've developed your ear a bit more. Now, at this stage, you may want to play with the tempo or the BPM. In LMMS, you can drag the tempo up and down like this, and it will change the speed at which the whole track plays. So you can make it play either faster or slower. So, we have our backbone, but we need to inject some musicality into it. We need some backing chords. Whilst our drums give us our basic skeleton, we need to inject some muscle, some feeling, and some musical notes into our track. The chords we select and how they're played is like choosing an RPG character class for your music. They won't completely define what your character is like, but they'll give you a very good general sense of what they are and what they can do. They provide that baseline mood and feeling that we can use to our advantage. There are rules and methods to constructing music like this, but they take a really, really long time to learn. Thankfully, we don't need to learn all of that stuff because some people have already taken a lot of them like more basic rules and programmed them into these things called chord generators. A chord generator should generate four chords that can be played one after another in such a way that they sort of make sense musically. And when you have a repeating pattern of these four chords, we call it a chord progression. To get my chords, I use this website called chordchord.com, but there are tons online that all do the same thing. And they often come with a few helpful drop downs as well that let you sort of predefine a mood for your music before you hit the generate button. And then you basically just keep hitting the generate button until you come across a chord progression that you really like the sound or the feeling of. So, once you find a chord progression that you like, you open up LMMS and then go and look for an instrument that you like the sound of. Again, this is all personal preference. I personally at this stage generally like to go for some generic synth sort of sound. And you can always change it later if you don't like what you choose now. So you take that instrument from the side and drag it into the main song editor. Then you open the piano roll by double clicking in the empty space next to the instrument you just put in the song editor. The piano roll is essentially just an editor for musical notes. Every single one of the chords in the chord progression you found will consist of about three to four notes. And this next bit's a bit tricky because the chord generator is often horizontal and the piano roll is vertical, but you need to copy each of the notes out of the generator and put them into the piano roll, one for one, like for like. You do this, like this. To start with, I generally make each chord play for a full bar or four beats, like we were talking about earlier. This will mean that the chord progression will last for four bars in total. You can then play around with the rhythm or the spacing of your chords or even make them play multiple times, but try and keep the total length of your chords to exactly four bars. We then take that chord progression and we'll repeat that four times. This will mean that in total our track will be 16 bars long and so we can take our one bar drum loop and repeat it 16 times underneath our track. After putting your chords into the editor and then putting the drums underneath, you should then be able to hit play on your track and hear something that sounds somewhat similar to a song. Now, this is probably going to be the hardest section to do depending on how good your ear for music is. But don't worry, I have a few tricks to help you even if you're completely tone deaf. Again, we pick another different instrument that will be used for our melody. 
the melody part of a song is essentially like the singer of the song or the main tune. It will provide all of the little details to our character that will make it truly unique and completely our own. Now, in LMMS, open the piano roll for that new instrument and hit the keys on your keyboard and it should start playing notes in the sound of that instrument. So, if I've got a good ear for music, I'm going to try and go for the feeling improvisation route. I will make my drum chord combo loop in the background while I play around with lots of different patterns and notes trying to figure out something that sounds good. And then, once I've come up with something that I think sounds good, I'll record it against the backing track or just click and drag the notes around in the note editor until I get to what I want. I then repeat this process until I'm happy with my melody across the whole track. Now, if you're in the perfectly understandable situation of not knowing where to start for these melody notes, then I have a helpful tip or two to help you get started. Start out by looking at which notes are in your chords and then working out which these correspond to on your keyboard. Write down which keys on your keyboard they are if you can't remember them easily. Now, play your chord and drum backing track and start playing some of the notes you got from your chords but on your melody instrument. And, if all's gone to plan, it should still sound pretty good. As the backing is playing, look for some of the notes between your chord notes that still sound quite good when you play them against the backing track. There should normally be about one extra note between the notes you initially found that still sounds pretty good. It takes a bit of practice though, so don't worry if you don't get them straight away. Once you have about five or six notes that all sound good when played against your backing track, you're gonna want to stick to them. This is because melodies aren't often composed of loads and loads of different notes. Trying to be simple but effective is always the way to go if you're unsure. And then after you've filled out your 16 bars with melody notes where you want them, you should have a finished track but there might still be a couple of small improvements we can still make. Now, when you listen to your track, it might sound like it doesn't quite have enough depth. And if this is the case, your track might be lacking a bass line. Now, the easiest and fastest way to make a bass line is to pick an instrument that sounds good when you play the low notes on it. Then you're gonna want to go back to your chords and copy all of the notes out of that and then paste them into your bass instrument. Then, delete all but one of the notes from each of the chords so that the only note left is the same one that is the name of the chord. So, for example, with a C chord that has the notes in C, E and G, you're going to want to delete E and G and just leave the C note of the C chord. Then, highlight all of the single notes you have left and drag them down so that they're on a much deeper version of the same note that they were on. In other words, they are several octaves lower. And if you play those, you should now have some good sounding bass notes. Wow, that's great. Finally, you might want to add some after effects to your track to really round it off. You do this by going to the FX mixer and clicking on the button that says add effects. The main one that I use that you will likely want to use as well is called Reverb. This will mimic a slight echo on all of your instruments that makes them sound as if they were recorded in a real room where the sound waves could have bounced around the room and echoed off the walls and things. So I'd really suggest adding that Reverb effect onto your track as it helps your music sound less synthetic and with the little dials, you have complete control over how much that effect will affect your sounds. Finally, you're gonna want to export your track as an MP3 or WAV file for use in your games. I generally stick with most of the default export options, but I do always ensure to tick the little loop track button on LMMS. If you don't tick this little box, LMMS will add a little bit of silence to the end of your track, which means it won't loop properly when you add it into your games. So just be sure to check that you're doing this properly. Now, if you've been following along with what I'm saying, you should have something that resembles a somewhat decent piece of music.
However, don't expect to rattle off a Mozart symphony first time. Not everyone gets a good handel on this straight away. But I promise you, the more you practice this, the better you'll get. You'll learn new techniques yourself and just find better ways of doing things. And hopefully this video will have given you some really solid starting points to at least launch off from. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing or hitting that like button. I'll really, really appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter or even join the Discord where you can directly ask me questions and I'll try and help you the best I can if I'm about. With that said, I hope you enjoy making music for your own games and until next time, goodbye.